Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how you doing? Um, so in today's little ASMR video, um, I'm using a blog that, or a website, farandwide.com, and it's an article about the most ridiculous geography questions on Google. Now, I've read the entire list and some of them are really, really silly. I'll be honest, some of them are very, very silly. But some of them are actually not silly at all. So um, I'm going to redo the list and their responses and also just talk about them. So if you like ASMR rambles, particularly on a geography content, and you like mostly soft-spoken with a little bit of whispering, then this could be a pretty good video for you. I hope you stick around. Okay, so the first question is a little bit silly. I mean, by a little, a lot. <laughs> and the question that people put into Google are, well, the, what people put into Google is, what country am I in? I think it's probably because they don't really understand the difference between, say, country and continent and county and whatever. So the website's response, why would anyone on this good earth ever have to ask that question? And why is this common enough to come up as a top autofill option on the search bar? This question makes us a little bit afraid for the future of humanity. <laughs> I personally would like to think that it's someone just getting the words and terms mixed up. Uh, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, I didn't know the difference between county and country. I mean, they are spelled incredibly similarly, aren't they? So that's what I think it was. I hope. Okay, number two. Um, is, is gone. <laughs> oh, okay, number two is, is Africa a big country? Okay, um, where to start with this? Okay, so the website says, in the age of the internet, people still haven't, haven't got it through their heads that Africa is not a country. Even worse, they aren't sure if it's a big country. Africa is actually the second largest continent in the world, and it's pretty easy to see that on a map. There really is no excuse for this level of ignorance. You say ignorance, but actually lots of people do misunderstand the fact that Africa is a continent. And I've done a video before showing you the true size of countries around the world. And the shocking thing that because we draw the globe, you know, the map of the earth on a flat surface, it makes, because of the curvature of the earth, it makes Africa look pretty small, as does South Africa and Australia, and anything south of the equator. Um, and actually, they're really big, and when, if you were putting them to scale alongside countries in North America, North Hemisphere like Europe, they're way bigger. So South Africa is absolutely huge, Peru, absolutely massive, Brazil, huge, um, Algeria, massive. So, um, yeah, it's just a case of the fact that when we draw maps, you can't draw a, a globe on a flat piece of paper, a piece of paper is impossible. So yeah, I get the fact that A, people don't know how big the continent of Africa is, and secondly, the fact that it is not a country. Okay, I think this might be an American asking this. Does Mexico count as international travel? So their response, as should be obvious from the word itself, international travel is when you go to another country. So yes, if you are not in Mexico, it's international travel. We don't get where the confusion is coming from. 
um, actually, again, I'm going to be really sympathetic. In the UK, um, obviously we are an island, but Great Britain itself actually consists of three countries, but we don't need a passport. If I'm, you know, I'm Welsh, I live in Wales, I can go to England and Scotland without a passport. But actually, we have a special agreement with the Republic of Ireland. And in most cases, I don't think we actually need a passport to travel across the sea to the Republic of Ireland. I think either nothing is needed or maybe just a UK driver's license for ID. We don't have ID cards in the UK. So, yeah, um, I can understand that when you have a really strong relationship or a very you know, your, your next door neighbor, sometimes you might not really conceive that as being foreign and international because you just feel so close, you know, people living in the south, southern parts of the states just on the border with Mexico might just, you know, it's just across a, a, a line in, you know, on a map somewhere. So yeah, I can understand that. And if you go to Europe, there's something called the Schengen area and also the European Union. And if you're in Spain, you just literally drive into France. It's fine. You don't need to show a passport. Stop at a border. There is no border control. You literally just drive from one country to the next. Famously, in parts of Belgium and the Netherlands, there's literally like a row of houses and maybe some shops and the end of the street is in Belgium and the beginning of the street is in the Netherlands. So it's not even like, you know, a wall. It's just a bunch of houses and shops and some of them are in Belgium. And so some of the shops will close earlier on a Sunday because in Belgium you have to close at whatever time and then they close at a slightly different time up the road on the same, you know, the next door shop because it's in the Netherlands. So I'm sympathetic. I understand from a European point of view that, you know, you don't really need um, official documentation to travel between your neighbors. I, I, I've, I get that actually. Okay, next one is really stupid though. <laughs> is Asia in Europe? Um, however, it does say, whoever asks this needs to go back to third grade and make sure they learn the seven continents. Even if you have a different educational system and learn five or six continents instead of the Anglo-centric seven, this question makes no sense. To take it even further, if you learn that Eurasia is a single continent, you would still have no business asking if Asia is in Europe. There just isn't any logical explanation for why someone needed to look this up. Again, it's just a misunderstanding of the continents. but. Some people in the comments section on this channel have said to me before about the fact that the distinction between Europe and Asia is very small. It's due to tectonic plates and above ground. Technically, it's just one landmass, which we could call Eurasia. But we separate it for lots of different reasons. And there is a third argument that says that because the, of the Minai Strait, um, connecting Egypt to um, Gaza and the rest of the Middle East. Technically, you could say that Africa is part of that contiguous continental area as well. So three continents is one, and then also North and South America being connected. So um, yeah, technically there might only be, say, four, if you include um, Australia as one and Antarctica as another. But then do you include Greenland? It's big enough to be a continent, but it isn't considered one because it's on a tectonic plate with North America. So the next one's hysterical. Is <laughs> is New Zealand real? <laughs> like is it a magical place? Like why? Why would you like where is New Zealand? I understand. New Zealand has the unfortunate ability of very often being missed off world maps. They just forget about it and cut it off because it's so far south. And um, yeah, because 
basically there's two versions of the world map there's the European view where Europe is in the middle and America is to its left and Asia to its right and then there's the American centric version where America is in the middle and Asia is to its left and Europe is to its right but there is no version seemingly that has Australia and East Asia um, as the centre and therefore very often New Zealand gets forgotten about and missed off however it is definitely real I've been there um, so I didn't go through the back of a wardrobe I flew for like 25 hours to get there um, it says there's a reason why Kiwi National Peter Jackson chose it as the filming location for his fantasy trilogy The Lord of the Rings but despite this we can assure you the country is indeed very much real Okay, next question is just very confusing. Where, that's the key word, where is Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> I mean, the fact that Cinco de Mayo means the 5th of May means that had they ask, ask, asked the question, when is Cinco de Mayo, then there's a certain level of like misunderstanding or lack of Spanish knowledge. But where is Cinco de Mayo is a bizarre question. So the answer, in our hearts and spirits, it lives on as we commemorate the Mexican victory of the French in the Battle of Puebla by getting drunk. Let its memory always remain there. So jokingly they say Cinco de Mayo is in Puebla. A shout out to any Mexican subscribers by the way. Um, is Peru bigger than England? Okay, this is not a stupid question because they have shown the um, correct size of the countries, what I talked about earlier on. And actually, when you look at South America, Peru doesn't look that big. Let me show you, however, the picture that they have on here. Peru is in the blue and the UK is like just Scotland down to England. So it's tiny. And Peru is way larger. So I didn't actually consider that Peru was even that big. It says Peru is the 19th largest country in the world. I had no idea. And my degree is in Hispanic studies. <laughs> the United Kingdom is the 78th. So yeah, Peru is much, much bigger than the United Kingdom, let alone England. However ridiculous this question can be partially blamed on the maps we use which have distorted the true size of countries. Okay, next one. This is a really American thing to ask. Sorry, I know that like half my subscribers are from the States, but I know you guys know your geography and you know that lots of people in the States don't, which I think is a, a you part of a victim of being such a, a massive country in itself and also having basically only like two neighbours. So the question is, what country am I in if I'm in the USA? Awkward. Um, however, I think probably what they meant was what country am I in if I'm in Texas? Because Texas is a state. No, that doesn't make any sense either, does it? It's just a really bad question. The website's response. We don't even know how to respond to this and we want to bet Google was confused, as confused as we are. If you find yourself not knowing the answer, we cannot help you. <laughs> okay, going back to Africa again. Is Africa a third world country? So their answer, again, Africa is a continent made up of 54 countries. Generalizations like this seem a bit absurd. While it's true that many African countries rank low on the Human Development Index, it's ludicrous to think every country situation is the same. Economic and social situations vary greatly. For example, African countries like Mauritius and the Seychelles rank higher on the HDI than Ukraine in Europe. I was about to say, actually, in terms of Europe, 
there are some extremely poor countries such as Moldova, Ukraine, um, to name a couple. Um, so yeah, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's understood that Africa has some extremely poor areas, and also areas where things that we take for granted, like fresh water, aren't available. Um, but, you know, if you go to places like South Africa, South Africa, you could be walking around a city with skyscrapers and listening on your, you know, listening to music on your phone and having 5G and whatever. It's uh, no different to any U UK or US city. Okay, one for Disney fans next. Where is Arendelle located in real life? I'm not going to make fun of this one because actually after I watched the movie and got the Nordic vibes from um, Frozen, um, I, I think I may have googled it as well. Not like where is it, but where is it supposed to be set? And it's supposed to be set in Norway. Norway. So the setting was, was inspired by Norway, but this is just a weird way to phrase a question. There are also people googling is Arendelle a real country? Um, we're not sure which one is worse. I do. I, I think that second one is way worse. Okay. Is South America part of the United States? <laughs> like, Brazil is bigger than the United States. So the fact that Brazil and all the other countries, Argentina included, would be just one of the states is ludicrous. I love the picture that they've done. Can you see that? So it's like South America, massive. USA, pretty big, but yeah, no. It's a very difficult concept to grasp, but there are countries outside of the United States. Another very difficult concept is the fact that continents are made up of countries. This means that, by definition, a continent can't be within a country. We pity all the geography teachers who have to deal with this. I was a Spanish teacher, so I did have to teach a little bit of um, geography. In, I always used to teach right at the beginning, beginning of the course with like my 11 year olds. Where in the world is Spanish spoken? Because otherwise it's like, why are we learning Spanish? I think it's a little different in the US because you have lots of Spanish speakers Spanish speeches, Spanish speakers all around you, but in the UK, particularly like in Wales, then you may not, have, may not know a single person that speaks Spanish. So to give it context, I taught them about Spain and South America, um, but yeah, they just often didn't know where these places were. Some people thought that Spain was in the UK, which is quite scary, because they'd been to Spain and it was a lot hotter. <laughs> Okay, another African one. It seems that people are quite confused about Africa. Maybe I need to do more lessons on Africa. More videos, more lessons. Does Africa have a president? Um, what is it with people thinking Africa is a country? Some countries within the large continent have presidents, others do not. Is there someone who presides over the whole continent? No, this isn't the fifth element. Amazing film. We don't have global presidents yet. Okay, next one is just weird. Is Argentina in Spain? Argentina being like 10 times the size of Spain. <laughs> Argentina was once a Spanish colony, so most of the country now speaks Spanish. But why would that make people think one country is within the other? That would be like thinking the US is within the UK. And before you go on and Americans are so ignorant, rant, I wasn't. We should disclose it was a European person who asked this. I don't know how they got that info from Google. Um, in that person from the UK is, I was a European person, so not from the UK necessarily. Yeah, I just think they got a bit confused about where Argentina is in the world and took for granted how large a country it is. Is Korea in Japan or China? I love the confidence of this person to like be like, 
I'm pretty sure it's in another country, but is it like China or Japan? I'm not thinking it's just a country completely on its own. You mean there are other countries in Asia besides Japan or China? Nonsense. Who would have thought Korean food, the Korean language, and K-pop came from a country within its own cultural identity, or with its own cultural identity? the wording of the next one which makes me giggle. Who is the king of Africa now? Like, this person clearly thought, oh, the king of Africa used to be this person, but who is it now? <laughs> it's like, there's no such thing. <laughs> the comment is even funnier. Okay, we need, to st we need this to stop. If there is just one thing you take away from this whole article, let it be that Africa is... In, in italics, not a country. Again, some African countries like Morocco have kings, others do not, and the king of Africa is as real as the king of Europe. I think I could be the king of Europe, frankly, but there we go. Okay, next one is super weird. Is Mexico... Is Mexico an island? wasn't from the States, because why would you, why would Donald Trump try to build a wall <laughs> when it's an island? Oh, it doesn't, it makes no sense. I just don't understand. Okay, the article says, what confuses us about this is that Mexico is a pretty big country, the 13th largest, in fact. So we don't fully understand how people have been looking at maps and missing the giant chunk of land that Mexico is. I don't think. <laughs> Apart from us, people just look at maps. That's the problem. We just assume that, like us, people just look at a map and think it's really cool and just... I've got... I've had a globe since I was, like, 14. My parents bought me a globe for Christmas. And it's my absolute pride. I love it. Um, prized possession. And it's in the other room. I used to have it in the back of the shop on all my uh, videos, but I moved into this room to have the better background. So, uh, yeah, like, I just generally would, I just go on Google Maps for fun. Like, the other day I was like, oh, I just want to look at, you know, some cities in Saudi Arabia, how close to the coast are they, and yeah, like, we do that right, but um, clearly not everyone does, so we shouldn't assume that they do. Um, okay. The next one's very poetic. I'm not going to make fun of it at all. Do mountains last forever? Oh, how cute. The comment they've said on the article. To quote Outcast's best song, nothing lasts forever. This includes mountains. The good news is that they are fairly sturdy and tend to last for a long time, given that physical geographic changes are usually slow. Short of another meteor impact, we are willing to bet most mountains will stay around during your lifetime, so there's not much to worry about. Okay, next one. I think, well, uh, as I said at the top of the video, is due to the, the, the words and the meaning of the words being mixed up. Which continent is also a country? So the article says this confusion probably happens because some genius decided to use the name Australia for the continent that includes Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. Others claim that was traditionally referred to as Oceania. When I was in school, it was called Oceania. Or Australasia, I think as well. A continent that included the above, plus New Zealand and the Pacific Islands is now collectively referred to as the Australian continent. I didn't actually know that. We can see this is confusing, just not enough for someone to think that the country of Australia is an entire continent in itself. It's not. Um, I watched a, a video that said it could be if you, there's like a version where you either consider any contiguous 
contiguous piece of land as a continent of North South Africa, um, America, Africa, Europe, Asia. So, like, two continents there. Um, and then there's this other one that's like, anything that's a large piece of land is a continent. So, Madagascar is a continent, Greenland is a continent, etc, etc. next one's just ridiculous. Is America in European? Yes, not Europe, European. Where to even begin with this? It seems like people searching for this don't fully understand the difference between a noun, Europe, and an adjective, European. But even if we give their grammar a pass, it is hard to believe that they would think that the US is in Europe. That shows a major lack of understanding of Western history. The next one's kind of cute. Where is the internet? Um, the next one's not stupid at all, and actually I have possibly googled this myself. Do rivers flow into oceans? I'm going to do a, a massive confession. Okay, are you ready? I thought rivers flew, flew, flowed from the ocean inland. Okay, maybe it's not plausible, but I actually thought, well, there's the ocean, there's some water coming in. Not that, oh, it's water from the top of a mountain, ice comes down, or from a spring, goes the river, goes the lake, runs towards the closest path to an ocean. There are, in fact, some rivers that do not flow into an ocean, like the Okavango River, which actually evaporates in the Kalahari Desert. Cool fact. However, they are a rare, they are a rare exception. The vast majority of rivers flow into the ocean. It's kind of what rivers do, which is why the question is so strange. I don't think it's strange at all. The next one is, is Asian a nationality? <laughs> It is truly worrisome. I love that word, worrisome. It's truly worrisome that there are people out there who really don't get how political geography works. Since Asia is a continent made up of 48 countries and therefore 48 nationalities, it is absolutely ridiculous to make this question. Oh God, the next one is worrying. Does Africa have water? We hate to break it to you, but water is necessary for life. This is why scientists are so desperate to find proof of water on Mars. So if there is life in Africa, you can safely assume that yes, there is water on the continent. But in this person's defense, all the pictures you see of Africa are all like deserts and drought and, you know, people trying to find water. So I can understand where that came from. The next one's cool, so we're going to play a game with it. And I want your comments down below, please. Do continents have capitals? There are some people out there who are very, very, very confused about what a continent is. Yeah, I think that's where it is. No, continents do not have capitals, and it's for the best. There would certainly be wars fought over that. Okay, so apart from Antarctica, let's say we put the capital of a continent in like the smack bang geographical middle of a country, of a continental god, I've started. Where would it be? So um, in South America, I think it would be like Asuncion in Paraguay, that sort of smack bang right in the middle in terms of northwest, south and east. In Africa, it'd probably be somewhere like Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Or maybe you could argue if Africa, because Africa's kind of like a P shape, right? If you think of it as a square, then Lagos in Nigeria probably would be the capital. Asia is a tricky one. Um, it'll probably be somewhere like to be honest, it'd be smack bang, either in like 
the middle of nowhere in Mongolia, or the same in, you know, Inner Mongolia in a desert in North China. So if you'd say, try to find the nearest city, it would be probably like Bangkok in Thailand. Um, Australia, literally nothing is in the middle of Australia. That's why all the major cities are on the coast, so that would be pointless. And um, North America, I think North America would be in the States, because obviously you've got Canada, but I think it would be like possibly towards the northern part. Originally, when I thought about this, I thought somewhere in Kansas, but I think maybe it would be more like South Dakota, somewhere like that, maybe a little bit over to the east of there, but yeah, it would be somewhere around there, because Canada has got so many islands towards the north, when you look at it on a map. Um, yeah, it has to be somewhere in the north of the United States, or maybe sort of it would be somewhere in Manitoba, Canada, somewhere like that. And then Europe. Well, if you include all of the Russian part of Europe, it sort of expands it. If you don't, if you think of Russia as not being included, it would be way further over, like maybe Cologne in Germany. But if you include Russia, it moves. So I would say it's somewhere like Warsaw in Poland or something like that. What do you think? Where should be North America's capital? Europe's capital? Um, oh, this next one's just dull. Is Egypt in Europe? Egypt is one of the most famous countries in the world, which we hoped would mean that people knew where it was. Apparently, that's not the case. Though, if you want a cool geography fact most people get wrong, Egypt is both in Africa and Asia. Still, there's no excuse for thinking it's in Europe. I disagree. It was colonized by both the British and the French, and I think um, the Germans tried as well during World War II. So um, at certain points it was colonized by several uh, European nations. Okay, is Central America a country? Again, this confusion over countries and continents is just nuts. No, there is no country called Central America. It's as if people had never heard of Costa Rica, Guatemala, or Panama. Central America is actually a region that covers, well, the central part of the American continent. That big chunk of land includes countries between North and South America. What language do they speak in France? The next one's not a stupid question at all. Does Europe have states? And actually the answer is yes, because Germany has states. Um, and even more confusingly, in the video I did last week, the UK is made up of countries, so we really stretch what the definition of as a country is in the UK, because we have, you know, several countries within a country. But yeah, in Spain there, um, provinces, what do we call them in Spanish? Yeah, the provinces and in states in Germany. Um, so yeah, that's, I think it's a reasonable question actually. Is Alaska an island? <laughs> what is so worrisome about this question is that it probably comes from the fact that on maps of the US, Alaska is shown as an island just floating <laughs> This is just because Alaska is attached to Canada, so they have to detach it and include it in a little square, which is more symbolic than literal. It's a sad, sad day for geography teachers everywhere. Okay, next one. Is Brazil bigger than California? Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world. On, on top of that, it is actually larger than the contiguous 48 states. Even with the distortion of the Mercator map, this should not be a question anyone would ever ask. And its current example, California is like probably
probably a twentieth the size. Hang on, see if I can zoom in. So California is in the sort of blue color, and Brazil is green. <laughs> it's big. Are there kangaroos in Africa? No. <laughs> oh my God! Where is the United States on the map? I can just imagine someone being shown a world map. I've watched these videos on YouTube. Have you seen them as well? Where they come to like a random American, they say, point to the US on a map, and they're like South Africa, France, Australia. It's um, scary. Oh, this one's cute. Where is United States Customs? I mean, they've probably heard about customs. They're like, but where is it? How do I find it? Not probably. They haven't traveled long distance before, particularly with air travel. This is something that is inescapable when you live in Britain, because every time you come back into Britain, and very often when you leave Britain, you have to go through customs. Um, so, yeah, just to even go on a very short trip anywhere, we have to go through customs, but you can easily never go through customs within the US as a US citizen, particularly if you've never been to Canada or, the Me or Mexico. Okay, and I think I'll leave it there. Some of the other questions aren't that interesting, but uh, yeah, there are more. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd love to do a second part. Um, so yeah, I just basically looked up what sort of things people Google with regards to geography and maybe some funny answers. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed that video. I hope you find it nice as well. Drop me a like if you did and definitely give me a comment. And um, yeah, just let me know if you uh, want me to do a second part in the future the moment though. Take care. Thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, please press subscribe.